Okay, let's layer some sounds. Let's layer this pad sound over here. This project is a template we made for a different video, but we are going to focus on the pad over here. And we have a pad sound um, from an operator over here, and it's in an instrument rack. I'm going to do it all over in a minute. Let, let's just see what it does solo. So that's the sound of that pad. And um, we are going to create a new MIDI track over here. And now we want to copy this uh, MIDI file, place it here, and go to, go to this MIDI track. And in order, uh, if we want to layer sounds, we can use different tracks. For example, put one sound here, put the second sound here, and the next one here, for example. Or we can do it on one track. If we do it on one track, we can uh, go ahead and use an instrument drag. So let's drag an instrument drag here. And let's, uh, let's open this view. So we are going to use uh, this operator as first element. I'm going to copy this in here. So let's play. Some of the effects that were applied on this on this channel aren't there, so let's pick out the chorus quickly and maybe also this compressor over here. Um, the other ones can be left out for the moment and I'm dragging them here behind the operator. So there's the compressor and there's the chorus. So that's the first layer. Maybe we want to stack up a piano sound in there as well. So let's look for a piano. Uh, if I go into the browser over here, I have the grand piano pack from Ableton.com. Well, let's use this piano sound and we can simply drag it in here in this instrument rack and we'll show up below the other one. And maybe we use a, we look for another mallet sound. We have orchestral mallets over here. And we can or maybe we use a vibraphone and drag it in there as well. And we can turn them off for the moment. Or maybe I'm turning on the, the vibraphone array and we can try to adjust it a little bit. So, when, whenever I select the vibraphone, over here it will show the instrument elements of that vibraphone. When I select the piano, it will show the instrument elements of the piano. And same thing with the operator. And it, like, every instrument in this instrument rack can have a, its own effect chain. So this compressor doesn't affect um, the piano. For example, but everything we are putting behind the instrument, the entire instrument rack, like here, like this uh, equalizer that's not active at the moment, uh, will be applied on everything. So uh, on the whole instrument rack, we're going to play the vibraphone along with the operator. Sounds really weird. Maybe we use a marimba or something. Maybe we 
you can place um, a reverb. Maybe this reverb I have prepared. I have prepared the warm long reverb. Maybe you can use this one over here on that marimba. Should be ending here. Maybe also um, a simple delay effect. Might do. So we have a little bit of layering already going on with those uh, with this MIDI information of the operator pad over here. And the marimba and the operator, they're both playing this. So um, I wanted to show something else because there's also sometimes the, the tones are too low or too high. And you can go ahead, for example, let's pick up the piano. Let's Let's put this reverb also on the piano. Okay. And, well, there is already a reverb, but I'd like to put another one. This one is, is a lot nicer. And I'm going to take out this one that they already have there. What I wanted to show was um, you can um, drag in a MIDI effect, a pitch, place it before your instrument and you can go up like one octave for example, 12 semitones over here, one, two, three, oh, 12. Or for example, you can you can generate chords like this if you are uh, if you're only using, um, for example, there would be only one tone over here, say uh, this one. I'm deactivating all the other ones. Maybe we could go ahead and like. Then um, do something else, the marimba. See, so there are several ways of layering in Ableton of course you can do it on one channel or you can like mess around with the pitching as well and like really get creative in that sense and um, I'm taking I'm taking this down to 12 again and I'm going to use this again now um, there's one more thing you can think of when layering. You might also, well, there are more, a lot more things you can think of, but like one comes to mind is what, how, how were we do, dealing with the frequencies? So we could um, go ahead and, and tell the, um, the operator pad, for example, to uh, occupy more the mid frequencies and not so many of the of the higher frequencies we want maybe the piano articulation more in the higher frequencies so what we can do is um we can uh, like cut out a little bit of the operator in that frequency range you see i'm on the operator now here in this layer and i can use the eq here Now I'm, I can EQ the piano exactly the other way around. 
plug in an EQ into the piano over there. And um, I'm always picking the wrong one here. And do exactly the opposite. So now they're not really interfering um, the frequency of the other thing because I'm I'm cutting out the I'm le leaving space here for the piano and in the piano I'm leaving space here for the lower frequencies of the pad for example but in in total if we want to apply some EQing in total we could go ahead and like use the equalizer after all of them. And for example, make some low cuts and ha have space for our bass. There might be the possibility of, um, like, we want the pad to be um, very mono in the middle of the stereo panorama, and we would like the piano to be really like on the on the stereo panorama. So we could go ahead and, and maybe turn this EQ off for a second, place another one in here. Oh no, let's do it with the same one actually. And, and just deactivate this and go from stereo to mid side mode. And now we, um, we are going to tell the pad to, you know, kind of get out of the way here on the sides in the high frequencies and the other way around we can tell the piano to uh, basically um, to go mid side we're going to the side and this one is going to be you know like maybe boost boost it a little bit or well first take this area down maybe and and maybe boost the other one you can think of boosting it maybe a little bit but not too much or we can also like scale up you know this equalizer has also this scale over here we can emphasize a little more on what we were actually doing so now we should be um hearing less operator sound on the sides of our stereo panorama left right and a lot more piano and you notice how the operator is really getting into the middle and the piano is occupying But of course we still have a little bit of operator left on the sides because we told um, the effect of the operator. Um, one was the chorus, we told that one to like really put the signal to the sides and we can go down with dry wet and even make it more clear. Now it's really just in the middle and not at all on the sides. If you can't hear that, there are plugins, for example, like I'm using the pass analyzer sometimes. Um, check this out. And we can actually check back if that if we are correct if we look at this over here. Turning off the grand piano, only playing the operator. So mono. Do you see this so much mono going on over here? If I'm playing uh, the piano, yeah, it's wider, it's a lot wider. Play them all together. Okay, it doesn't make too much sense in analyzing, but you see, this thing is really, if we uh, um, clear the signal, it's really in the middle now. And once I apply the, once I apply the chorus, for example, see how it opens up. So anyways, um, those are some uh, ideas for um, 
for layering sounds with an instrument rack on one track. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this. We have this template available uh, in the description. I'm going to uh, put a link into the description. This track over here is part of a start to finish video on our channel where we are constructing this track, this entire track from start to finish. Might be having some insight there for you too. And um, I hope to see you next time. Bye.